Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna and today I'll be discussing a very complicated topic uh, this is known as the hepatic segmentation and I will make sure that you understand before this video ends all right so guys uh, to those who haven't subscribed to my channel yet I make an acne a piece of cake so you should definitely reconsider that decision and uh, let's begin with our segmentation of the liver we've already talked about the anatomical structure of the liver now basically what we're trying to understand is how the liver is divided functionally which means to carry out the function of liver there are different divisions of the liver they are not same as the anatomical divisions for instance if this is uh, what the division of the right and left lobe is by this falciform ligament plane it does not mean that this is the right functional lobe and this is the left no this is just the right anatomical and left anatomical lobe but the functional lobes of the liver they have a different plane of uh, dissection and that what that's what we're going to talk about today so what happens is firstly i'm going to draw the liver so you can better understand it all right this is your anterior part and this is the posterior part right the first division of the liver is into its principal functional lobe which is known as the portal lobes the portal lobes are basically the right and the left functional lobes of the liver which are divided on the basis of the following plane by the right sagittal fissure postero inferiorly and the right sagittal fissure i've already talked about uh, it is the groove inferior vena cava all the way to the fossa of the gallbladder and anteriorly this line will extend this imaginary line will form the cantley's line the same line is going to be carried out anteriorly and overall this line is known as the main portal fissure we've divided the liver into right and left functional parts this has nothing to do with the liver anatomy so this right sagittal fissure and the cantley's line anteriorly is dividing your liver into a right and a left functional part all right these can also be known as the right and the left portal lobes why are they the functional lobes they are the functional lobe for this reason we've talked about the arterial supply of the liver what happens is your portal vein and the hepatic artery coming in the portal triad or the porta hepatis these are divided into a right branch and a left branch all right the right branch will independently go ahead and supply the right portal lobe or the right functional lobe of the liver and the left branch will independently go and supply your left portal lobe or left branch these two are independent of each other which have their own primary uh, blood supply or first degree blood supply the right and left branches which is dividing them into right and left portal lobes all right now what happens is these right and left lobes are further divided by a right and a left line these lines are known as the right portal fissure and the left umbilical fissure these lines you cannot see them anatomically but they exist all right they, they divide your right and left functional lobes into medial and lateral divisions so all right this is the right portal fissure this is the umbilical fissure right portal fissure umbilical fissure all right so now what happens is 1 2 3 4 there are four divisions of the liver due to these two lines all right and this is the main portal fissure this is the right portal fissure and this is the umbilical fissure so now we've divided into four divisions now these four divisions will gain their blood supply from the secondary branches of these right and left branches the segmental vessels they will receive their independent blood supplies from the so like the, the right branch will give one segmental vessel for the lateral part and then the right branch will give another segmental vessel for just the medial part all right so this is the left medial part this is the left lateral part similarly uh, one uh, segmental vessel will go for the right medial part and one segmental vessel for the right lateral part fine now another plane will come and divide these even further into segments of the liver and this division is done by the transverse hepatic plane so this plane passes this way and remember one thing this plane will not pass in the left medial division now we have how many segments we have the left medial segment we have these two 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 segments have been formed of the liver what about the 8th segment 
the eighth segment of the liver is actually the caudate lobe of the liver why it is a very important lobe i want you all to remember that the caudate lobe is like an independent liver you can literally take out all the liver and the caudate lobe will be functioning independently why because when the right and left branches were uh, made both the right branch and the left branch gave a supply to your caudate lobe it didn't just have the right division it didn't just have the left division it is nobody's it's in the middle and it derives a blood supply from both you can say it's taking benefit of both the branches with no baggage this is the eighth segment of the liver and overall we've divided the liver into how many segments eight segments and now these eight segments will be extracting blood supply from your third degree vessels each so there here's a third degree vessel here's a third degree vessel here's a third degree and here's a third degree i really hope that makes sense another important part is the right portal fissure the umbilical fissure and the main portal fissure are very important because within these fissures lie your right intermediate and left hepatic veins and these are important surgically these entire segments what is the point of these segments is when a surgeon performs surgery these segment make it easy for the surgeon to resect a single segment now what happens is suppose the surgeon has no idea about these segments right and he just randomly takes out a piece from over here he is disturbing the blood supply completely the third degree vessel over here is going to get compromised third degree vessels here is going to get compromised right rather what what is happening due to these segmentations the surgeon can take out one now he knows that this is an independent segment so the surgeon will take out just this segment so only one branch will be compromised right? by the help of guidance from these right intermediate and left hepatic veins all right he will detect these veins because we know that these uh, planes are actually difficult to uh, understand like you can't see these planes they're not anatomical planes anatomical meaning you cannot see them these planes are like imaginary but when you open up the liver and when you find this vein the right hepatic vein you know it is that plane the right portal fissure you know when you see the left it will be the left umbilical fissure and the, now the surgeon will know that this is a independent segment and i can remove this without any fear of complications however care should be taken by the surgeon as these uh, veins can be site of massive bleeding and whenever there's bleeding in the liver what you can do is the pringles maneuver uh, is when the right free margin of the lesser omentum is compressed because in the right free margin lie what the main structures of the portal are the portal vein and the hepatic artery when they're compressed the bleeding will stop instantly uh, overall these segments can be named in the form of roman numerals so starting from the left like left side this is one this is two three four and then here it's five six seven eight all right so you can uh, even label them that way so that was all you needed to know about the hepatic segmentation i really hope that makes sense to you the concept of portal lobe and the segmentectomy which the surgeons carry out that important clinic do not forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching